Na manhã desta segunda-feira, 11 de novembro de 2019, a SpaceX lançou 60 satélites Starlink do Space Launch Complex 40 na estação da Força Aérea de Cabo Canaveral, na Flórida. Neste lançamento foram reutilizados o primeiro estágio do Falcon 9, que apoiou as missões Iridium 7, Salcon 1A e Nusantara Sato, e também a carenagem utilizada anteriormente na missão Arabsat 6A no foguete Falcon Heavy no início deste ano. Após a separação dos estágios, a SpaceX aterrissou com sucesso o primeiro estágio do Falcon 9 na balsa Of Course I Still Love You, que estava estacionada no Oceano Atlântico. A SpaceX está desenvolvendo um sistema de internet de banda larga e baixa latência para atender as necessidades dos consumidores em todo o mundo. O Starlink fornecerá internet rápida e confiável para populações com pouca ou nenhuma conectividade, incluindo as comunidades rurais e lugares onde os serviços existentes são muito caros ou não confiáveis. Desde o lançamento mais recente do satélite Starlink em maio, a SpaceX tem maior capacidade de espectro para o usuário final através de atualizações no design que maximizam o uso das bandas KA e KU. Além disso, os componentes de cada satélite são 100% degradáveis e queimarão rapidamente na atmosfera da Terra no fim de seu ciclo de vida, que segundo a SpaceX é uma medida que excede todos os padrões de segurança atuais. A Starlink tem como objetivo oferecer serviços em parte dos Estados Unidos e Canadá após seis lançamentos, expandindo-se rapidamente para a cobertura global do mundo provado após 24 lançamentos. LD is go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off with gratitude to our veterans today and always go USA! Falcon 9 is pitching downrange. Power and telemetry is nominal. T plus 55 seconds into launch and we've had a on-time liftoff and a beautiful view of the Falcon 9 vehicle making its way to orbit. We are coming up in about 10 seconds here on max Q. That is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle will see during ascent. We should be able to hear that call out. Vehicles experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. And there's that call out for max Q. Coming up next is a rapid succession of events, starting off with main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, followed immediately by stage separation. That's the separation of the first stage from the second stage. And then seconds after will be the lighting of our second stage engine, which we call second engine startup, or SES-1. That is coming up here in about 45 seconds. And back engine chill. And we've got a great view this morning with some pretty clear blue skies, the earth in the background. Now, if you're just now joining us, we are 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, stage separation, and SES-1.
What you see on your screen, you should be able to see the stages separate. About 10 seconds here. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. There, as you saw on your left screen, we had Miko and stage separation. On your right screen, we should see that second engine startup. And there's that second stage engine glowing bright red. Coming up next in about 30 seconds is fairing deployment. Now a reminder, this, is, this fairing is being flown for a second time, which is a first in SpaceX history. And what you can see on your screen, on the left screen, those grid fins have been deployed. And there is our fairing deployment. This is the first reflight of our fairings. So such an exciting mission this morning already. As the second stage continues to orbit with those 60 Starlink satellites on top, stage one is making its way home for the fourth time. Now stage one is going to execute two burns before hopefully it's standing there on our drone ship. The first one will be the entry burn, which occurs at about T plus six minutes and 23 seconds, so a little over two minutes from now. That's where we're going to relight three of those Merlin engines and slow the vehicle down such that it can safely re-enter the atmosphere. From there, the booster will coast for just under a minute and a half, and then execute what is called the landing burn. That is where we're going to reignite this, a single engine, that E9 engine right in the middle of the booster, slowing the vehicle down to zero velocity, hopefully standing right there up on the drone ship. Meanwhile, stage two continues to fly nominally. We're hearing that MVAC-D power is nominal. It continues at full power. Stage two pressures. The tank pressures are nominal as well. First and second stage are on a nominal trajectory. We're just over a minute away from that entry burn. Meanwhile, stage one. Bermuda. Meanwhile, stage one continues to make its way down. That MVAC engine is powering that second stage of those satellites with 250,000 pounds of thrust. Okay, we're coming up in about 20 seconds on that entry burn. You should be able to see that on the left side of your screen. Meanwhile, stage two continues to burn nominally. Stage one FTS is saved. Stage one entry burn. And as you see, that entry burn has begun. Go for another five seconds or so. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And as you just heard, we had a successful shutdown of that entry burn. So for about another minute and a half, stage one is going to coast, making its way down to the drone ship. And at First T plus. And second stage continue to follow a nominal trajectory. And in just under a minute, that landing burn should start.
Stage one transonic. Everything continues to be nominal on stage two. And in just under 10 seconds, that landing burn should start. Hopefully we'll get some nice on vehicle video. Stage one landing burn. We don't have that video just yet, but that landing burn has started. Second stage is injured terminal guidance. Stage one landing will deploy. It looks like we're not going to get video on the way down. Oh, but we have the drone ship. And wow. The Falcon has landed for the fourth time. Amazing. These boosters are designed to be used 10 times. Let's turn it around for a fifth, guys. Wow, fourth landing, that is super cool. So stage two, I believe uh, we have had Seco one. Um, we're gonna enter a coast phase. Um, so to, before we do that, we're gonna take a quick break. Sorry, it's very exciting over here. But, uh, as we leave, we're gonna have an animation that shows you where we are in the coast. Come back to the webcast for Starlink. We are getting very close to deployment of those 60 Starlink satellites. Now, after deployment, the satellites will appear to be kind of clumped together, but that's totally normal. As you can probably imagine, 60 separate, separa 60 separate separation systems is super inefficient. It adds mass, it adds complexity, and therefore it adds cost. Instead, we deploy them all at once, allowing them to slowly disperse from one another and to do so without the use of complex mechanisms. They might even bump into one another, which if that happens is totally okay the satellites were designed with this possibility in mind. All right, we lost the video just there, but let's listen in and see if we have any word on the deployment. Starlink tension rod release confirmed. And as you just heard, we have have confirmation that the tension rods have been released. Let's see if we can get some video of that. That would be really awesome. There we go. Now, as they make their way off, next they'll start to slowly drift apart and then deploy their singular solar array pointed at the sun to begin charging their batteries. And over the course of the coming weeks, the satellites